see the, the, the gardener's home, the cottage, move me right in. <laughs> <laughs> This is green gold, yeah. I don't want to make this uh, horizon here at the edge of the water too straight. I'm slanting it up a little bit. And paintings like this have to be fairly spontaneous. We're looking sort of to get a freshness here um, as opposed to doing tight renderings. As that dries down, I'll go into my sky. Uh, I use my basic gray, cobalt blue, burnt umber. Just enough of a sweep here, take advantage of it. Now looking at this color and looking at that color, we may need to add a little brown. See how that changes a little bit? Mm -hmm. Here we want gravity to work a little bit for us. It will scrub into that. There's a lot of moisture in the air, so it works to our advantage. I'm not concerned about too many hard edges here because the fact that it's going to, uh, it can be softened up later. But I kind of want a little bit of peak of pure white in there. Because notice in the horizon there is that break, which is kind of nice. Foreground. The foreground here too, I'm just going to bring my sky colors right down into the water. So I have the cobalt blue and burnt umber. Add water. Working sort of dry and scratchy like this will wreak havoc on your brushes. Yeah. But you can see how <laughs> the the overall effect is good. Maybe it's a little extra blue here. I'm not putting in the house. Sorry, house. I like that stone wall that runs along the edge yeah. there. If you vary the line and you break it a little bit, it's always advantageous because then you get some sort of rhythm working within it. This also color can be used as a shadow tone behind the trees at the dark sepia. Check with the back of my hand. This is still pretty wet. So there's there's the gaps where you see water in the uh, the dark brown. There also the mountain is now being reflected in the water since the tide is coming in. We're starting to see the the hillside reflected in the water. Mm -hmm. So go back to our green. We're going to throw a little green in here. Cobalt violet with my gray mix now, my blue and brown. Unfortunately, I just heard the weather for tomorrow. Heavy rains all day. Yeah, I don't listen to the weather. I always wait before I commit myself to the really dark colors. You save your darkest for last always? Yeah. Especially here, there's so much to do to consider. So I'm building those darks very gradually. What did you say you were waiting for in the sky? This has to dry to put, oh, the, oh. put the trees on top of it. Oh. So it takes a little extra time. That's, that's 
already confused. Also here with a little bit of just a little sunlight, this would be drying very quickly, mm -hmm. you know, like instantly. And I, you don't quite have that. So you do the best you can with it. You're on the water. Let's go to the sap green, which is brighter. Now it's looking a little more Irish. See, building my trees from behind so that you get the beginning of what those darks are talking about. This is the road here, coming up. We'll leave the cars out. All right, I'm gonna change my brush to the smaller five. We're ready to commit ourselves here. <laughs> get those darks in there. I added uh, sepia to my sap green. I'm also going to add a little burnt umber. I need a redder color in there. Now why am I not painting a tree? Because at this distance, first of all, it becomes abstracted. The wind that comes through here has created these trees to fall in a particular shape. The, the right side of them seem more worn. Look at the direction. They're, they're all pointing this way. Mm -hmm. That's because the wind is pushing them there. So these are the kind of things I think about when I'm looking at this stuff. And I've left this white, see? So. Rossiana, I didn't hear you. Yeah, Rossiana. Hey, come on. <laughs> Love that sound. Now, some people don't see this when they look at this landscape, but I see the purple in the water. So I put the purple in the water. Cobalt violet mixed with a little of a French ultramarine. The double wash is to try to keep my color as clean as possible. The formation of the clouds has changed quite a bit. The lighting's changed. They have flattened out. You know, one of the things to remember in the watercolor painting is that the, uh, the colors dry differently when they're, you know, when they're wet between where they're dry. And I think that's something to, to think about. We don't want to overwork it. I gotta see what it looks like. I have no idea. It's okay. Depth of field. I wonder, maybe it's it's lower and more compact the landscape. Uh, you know, my paper is a little too square. I edited trees out. There were trees along this this horizon edge here, which I didn't put in. Because if I put them, I obscure the view of the mountain. These are important here along that edge. Take it from there. I like the sky. These skies change all the time. You know, you can't paint a bad cloud. Right. Because there are this one for every moment of the day.
put it on a wet surface with water coming down on you, it tends to dilute and give you these nice half tones in here. It's kind of pretty. So that was accidental. No, no, we were painting. Painting with one hand and umbrellas in the other, that's right. Oh. Actually, there are two layers of green here. There is um, green gold, and then over the green gold came um, sap green, and on top of the sap green, I mixed a little bit of sap green with burnt umber, and that gave me the eventual color here. So you see this kind of a paler green color in here. That's the green gold. Last thing before I decided I was drowning, uh, I put in the lavender, this cobalt violet. That really kind of... Uh... It gels it. So with the pathway, we sort of wrap ourselves around the painting. Here, the darks, this is sepia, right out of the tube on wet paper. On just the paper or on something's under it? Green is under it. No, there's no green under there. How about green is under to the right, right? Here? Yeah, there and... And that's actually the sepia with ultramarine blue, which makes the gray. Most blue-browns will make the gray. Uh, I had to constantly reinforce the shadow for the reeds because they it's causative there. You so wait, what that. did you say you made the gray with? French ultramarine and uh, sepia. You yeah. don't use a Payne's gray? I, I dropped Payne's gray out of my palette probably about 20, 15 years ago. Why? Why? It's a color that is first of all very predictable. It's, it's an yeah, obvious Yeah, who gray? Predict what they can do. <laughs> 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 and I decided that it didn't have the flexibility yeah. because with cobalt blue burnt thunder you can you can take the color out, put it in, intensify it. You can make it bluer or browner. And the paint's pretty stains. It's it stains and it pretty much stays the same color. It doesn't vary too much. Mm -hmm. Leaving know. that white there above, you get the that sense makes of the all the mist. difference in the world with that sky. Yeah, with the mist. Okay. One, at one point, I actually turned the turn the painting this way, so that it would get a little bit of this fuzzy haze here. You know, and all through, you notice the gravity is pulling down in the other direction, all through here. And then, of course, I didn't want to do that too much because I didn't want the green to run into the yeah. sky. Did you do that on that one also, or no? Did no, you turn this it one, down? the wind was blowing. By the time the paper was wet and the paint went down, the first mm -hmm. drizzles started coming. So uh, I had to just work very quickly. You capture the moment, you try to realize something as quickly as possible. I follow some basic rules start sky, water introducing some of the other elements, but I always come back with my darks, reaffirm my darks one more time before I leave. Visit a few of the nice castles in Connemara, Ashford Castle, Ballinahinch, Kylemore Abbey. Beautiful places to visit, part of our heritage and history today. But those were not the homes of the landlords. Those were the holiday home of the landlord. This is where they came for a few weeks mm -hmm. in the summer. So it gives you a good idea how the landlords ran the system. Mm -hmm. The landlords were the law. They were the legislators. They were the MPs. It was mind over matter in those days. The landlord didn't mind and the tenant didn't matter. <laughs> the same in uh, England, Scotland and Wales. It was the landlords that ruled. So in 1847, when the potato crop failed, the export trade was allowed to continue. 1.2 million people died of starvation in this country in 1847. Another million was forced to cross the sea that year to America and Canada. Some of them went to England as well, of course. England was not a bad country to go to. The thing that wasn't working in England was the politics. Politics were wrong. And the Irish were grossly neglected. I'll go chasing after moonbeams. Or try and light a penny candle from a star. History is told in songs. Mm -hmm. Trying to change a culture in a small little country on the peripheral of Europe for 700 years by an empire failed. It's a good lesson to world leaders today. Don't make the same mistake again.
it's, you cannot change a culture by force. It was tried by the Romans, the great Roman Empire. It was tried by the British Empire in a small island here. We exported a lot of this rich culture and it's embraced the world over today. We still have a lot of our culture today. We still have our own language and we're still making a wish give up. You raise your glasses high, you shout out these words after me and you say, here's to all, here's here's to all. all. who wish us well, who wish us well. well. And those who don't, and those who don't, and go to hell. <laughs> <laughs>
So most of your gestures are going to be horizontal gestures. So this way, like this, see? Starting with a light color. Up here too. If I find that it's too uniform, pull the color out. Because I'm, you know, as a lazy artist, I want to try to get as many effects at one time as possible. You need patience. If you have a stick to it in its quality, you can do watercolor painting. Because it's slow, slowly building up of different areas all the time. Work my way around, moving all the time, coming back to areas. Yeah, or you take out more paint than you put, leave down, but the effect is good, yeah. see? Again, you want to set a certain rhythm within your work that you don't have to be hurried. The, the great thing about painting is it's supposed to be relaxing and enjoyable. You're supposed to come away like not totally fatigued and drained. <laughs> and it, it, if you can do that, that's great, you know. The most difficult thing in painting, I think, is to do random. You know, unless you find that, you know, if you're doing a, a scene somewhere, like how do you make it look so natural that it's just, it's correct. Right here, you see these trees are fairly dark. See, they're all fairly dark across there. But there are highlights and shadows inside these. I found that the Irish trees are very sculptural. They're like very defined shapes. So we'll go with a lighter color. This is a pale green. And it's just enough to get it started. Leaving a little bit of white. So I talked about a little bit of patience sometimes with these things. So the bigger the painting, the, the more, uh, more patience you need. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no universal truth here. In other words, you can't just say, well, I'll do this every time, and this is the formula. You know, it will change with every painting you do. Different things will be asked for. But you can see it's starting to get a little character now. You know, when I make suggestions, these are things I've actually done myself. Yeah. yeah so sure. it's a more practical way of thinking about it, maybe. It's an important dark. Between the distance. Notice I'm leaving the highlight here. I've actually left the white on top of the tree. Because mm. as I come into the background, comes up. Mm. You see? That tree will start to stand out a little more. There it is, kind of blended. Now it looks so yellow compared to what's on top of it. Oh yeah. Just putting the sunshine into the... So you can't do that with a different yellow? It's really got to be transparent? Well, right. you can experiment and yeah. see what works. Yeah. Moving around your painting from one part to the other is a good thing because then you're able to um, allow things to dry. Sometimes the colors, they get dull. That I learned from looking at master painters. You know, they'll come back and they'll say, that's the same gray, but how come it doesn't look quite like that? Well, they've added a color to it to help enhance it. Now you will see a finished version of this someday. Finished version of this one, or are you going to repeat it? I'll repeat it um, in a controlled environment. <laughs> There's the beginning of the grasses. If you layer the transparent colors over each other, making these sort of arbitrary blotches in places, eventually you'll build up enough texture where people will say, ah, it's grass. I like the warm, sunny feeling it has. Yeah, that moment of brightness yes. that they had there was quite strong. Mm -hmm. And then as you come forward, the foreground needs resolution, but I think by doing this, it activated that space. The yellow, the burnt sienna. But that's sort of the final, final portion of the painting, mm -hmm. is tweaking it a little here, a little there. There's no major overall 
you know, plunge. Mm -hmm. That's all done. But the progression was very slow. Steady, balanced, until you get to this stage. The key thing that I was trying to learn about was how to bring these darks and skies, the juxtaposition of those tones. The bright boat, for instance, painting a base green in there, to bring out the whites for the for the mast. I'm sure the mast is too short. But these are all corrections as I go. But this is this kind of painting is intuitive painting. You're doing it as you go, trying to figure it out. There's a lot of play involved. Yeah, it's very flat. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little darker in here, do you think? Could be. Or lift color out to make it lighter. Mm -hmm. That would be easier. Start with the lightning. And then go back if I need to. Dark. Your paper was very wet? You wet your paper? I wet it. I didn't wet the whole paper. You wet I wet this. pieces at a time. Mm -hmm. It's nice, all those blurry greens. And I did a lot of the work upside down. So the water would, the run paints down. would run down. Run down. Yeah. Also, you gave a sense of lifting up. Mm -hmm. You know, once you can mm -hmm. see it this way, the landscape lifts up. Mm -hmm. I intend to leave a lot more white in my paintings. I'm trying to get softer and softer. You know me, I'm heavy on the hand. Mm -hmm. That's all right. So. The more you produce, the more exercises you execute, the closer you'll come to that balance. Mm -hmm. It all comes through repetition. Yeah. Oh boy. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Wow. Well, you saw the colors. The, no, the area I was painting was very long. It was all the way out to the inlet and then all yeah. the way around. So I really condensed it into one scene. This really was over much further. Right. But I, you know, wanted to have, we were sitting on these rocks here. And then mm -hmm. this is, by the time we left, the water was all the way up here. Mm -hmm. And I just did it with a flat brush, the whole thing. That frees you up, right? Yeah. You get a little more flexibility. Because you did it so good. fast. Yeah, well, she related to, she, she was related to where she was. Mm -hmm. you know, it's really it was very nice. windy. I mean, the purple right along yeah. the shoreline. Well, shore this line. area was very, very dark. Yeah, it's beautiful. And then these rocks yeah. were very dark. And But I didn't want to just put it here. I wanted to like move it around so that it wouldn't be in one spot. Excellent. And then what I do is I would take these colors and pass over this with it but in a in sort of blotted yeah. manner, yeah, yeah. lifting color out. Mm -hmm. Slowly but surely, you take away the whites. But these little set studies, again, I said most importantly, help to imprint in your mind the, the color, the experience, the values that were out there, um, your experience in the wind, the rain, <laughs> you know. I mean, I wanted this to be quick, but these are not quick. Well, quick, it's, it's relative. You know, for a new landscape, it's an awful lot to take in. I mean, not only are we learning the techniques and methods, but we're trying to understand what we're looking at.